And we're live. Um, I am not currently in the shot at the moment, so anybody who is going to be tuning in, uh, just know that I will be over there in a moment. Hello to anyone just joining the stream. I am currently not in the shot, but I will be in the shot so momentarily. So bear with me a second as I get this all set up. Um, just going to go ahead and share the stream, but I will be over there with the codex and talking about everything in just a moment. Um, I just got to go ahead and share this a couple of places and I will be right into the shot. And uh, if you guys have questions about the codex, what you want to look at, what you want to see, just let me know, but bear with me just a second while I go ahead and share our stream video. All right, so, what's up? How's it going, guys? Um, I was able to go ahead um, and get uh, my hands on the Adeptus Mechanicus Codex uh, with for an early preview. So thankfully, um, I wasn't sure that I was actually going to go ahead and get, get one of them or how that was going to pan out, uh, but I was able to go ahead and get an early copy of the Codex, which is super great. We also have the data cards. Um, and I have to say, I originally, like, um, I wasn't at even going to get the objective, tactical objective cards, and then we played a game and I didn't have the tactical objective cards, and that is just a poor decision. Um, rolling for 10s and 1s uh, without the tactical objective cards. If you do do not or have not picked up a set of those, um, I recommend doing so. I do not advise going without them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this up so I can get into the uh, chat. So, I do not and now I'm going to echo. Um, All right, there we go. So anyway, um, let's take, go ahead and take a look at the book itself. Um, just right off of the bat, with the um, Admet Codex, uh, I've noticed here that, of course, like the other codexes, a fair bit of the codex is actually lore based. So, yeah, uh, you guys can so you guys can see like this right here, this thick sort of spine for this. This is all lore. Um, it tells you about the different backgrounds of everything. You know, we got like just opening up here. We have Belisarius Call and his lore background. If you guys can see that, hopefully it's focusing enough so you can kind of zoom in and see what it has there. Um, We've got the house, uh, different uh, Admechaline Knight Houses, which I find this stuff super awesome. Um, all of the knights that I play, they are Admechaline Knights. I want to go ahead with the Metallica Force, which as you saw in some of the other video videos and tabletop tactics, and they were talking about that kind of stuff, it's uh, a very fast-paced type of an army, which I like. I think that's really cool. I will say, however, that um, in looking at everything, going over everything, I feel like Belisarius Call is sort of a necessity, um, taking him and, and using him with this uh, because of the abilities that he grants uh, to his, his Mars admit guys. Um, I think that force orging the army, you're going to have to do it or kind of be creative in how you do that. Um, I don't, not that I think that like Metallica Forge World isn't going to be competitive or isn't going to be uh, good. Um, I'm just thinking based on what I've seen so far, that you're going to have to be a little bit creative with how you force org uh, the army. And uh, having call and being able to give the ability for the rerolls to everybody else, I think that's going to be like a huge deal. Um, but yeah, you can see here again, so we're going over and just looking at the different, different lore uh, stuff that it talks about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip past that stuff for the moment, though, and I'm going to go ahead into the, uh, it starts here with the Defenders of the Forge World, and that is where it starts with the actual meat and potatoes of the rules. Again, just so we have a spine reference, this is uh, the rules part of the book uh, that is included here. 
because some people honestly don't care. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take a look first off at the Canticles of the Omnissiah table. So let's take a look at that. And um, the first one that I'm seeing here is Incantation of the Iron Soul. Uh, so it says you can re-roll failed morale tests for affected units. Um, the second one here is Litany of the Electromancer. You can roll a d6 for each army unit. That is within one inch of affected units. On a roll of six, the unit being rolled for will suffer D3 mortal wounds. Um, the next one down, number three, is Chant of the Remorseless Fist. Uh, this allows you to re-roll any hit rolls of one for affected units in the fight phase. All right, that's, that's pretty sweet. Uh, number four is Shroud Psalm, which is affected units gain the bonus to their armor saving throws as if they were in cover. Uh, units already that are in cover will be unaffected with that. Uh, next one down, number five, is Invocation of the Machine Might. Uh, affected units have plus one strength. That can be useful. Um, number six is Benediction of the Omnissiah, which you get to reroll fail to hit rolls for of one for affected units in the shooting phase. So, um, and about the Canticles of the Omnissiah, it says that uh, all units with the ability uh, during the battle, depending upon the Canticle of the Omnissiah, currently being canticled, um, they get a bonus during the battle, depending upon, you know, which canticle that is. Um, at the start of each battle round, it says here that you can pick which canticle of the Omnissiah from the table below is in effect for the duration of the battle round. The same canticle may not be picked twice during the same battle. So it's something interesting to think about as well. Um, alternatively, you can randomly determine which canticle of the Omnissiah is in effect by rolling a d6 and consulting that table below, which is the oh, oh. table we just went over. Now, um, it says, note that if you randomly determine a canticle, it can take effect even if that same canticle has been in effect earlier in the battle. So if you have a battle forged army, uh, units that receive the bonus, um, if every model in their detachment has that ability. Below that, um, it's got a war gear table talking about some of the war gear stuff. Uh, we take a look here and it says... Um, special weapons, we see the Arc Rifle, the Plasma Caliber, uh, trans tyrannic Arquebus, um, Pistols, or the Arc Pistol, the Phosphor Blast Pistol, Arc Maul, Power Sword, and the Taser, Goad. Uh, Carapace Weapons, of course, we have the Twin Icarus Cannon, uh, the Storm Spear Rocket Pod, and the Iron Storm Pod. Um, now, one thing I did notice also that was interesting were how the keywords um, were detailed in the book itself. Uh, for me specifically, I was concerned about how this is going to relate to the Adeptus Mechanicus Knights because, you know, for, as far as Admech stuff, that's what I use, that's what I play with, um, since my Knights are Admech House Aligned Knights. I thought that maybe they were going to get Keyword Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, that's not necessarily what it is. It's Household Keyword Kestor Mechanicus instead of Kestor Imperialis. So again, some changes, I think, with Force Organization there. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really know, I'll really have to look at that as far as um, if you're able to make an effective force uh, night-wise from that. The nights have been sort of weird. I haven't really sat down, I don't know if any of you guys have, but um, I haven't been able to make, I guess, what I would call uh, an effective nights list as of yet. So I'm hoping that the stuff in here allows me to do a little bit more of that. Um, now... I want to also say for the record that there was a big debate, and I made a post about it in one of the 40k main groups on Facebook, about whether or not uh, the tech priest could actually do repair work on Imperial Knights. And everyone's like, no, that's ridiculous. Well, okay, not say everyone, but a lot of people were like, no, that's ridiculous. They can't do that. Um, you know, they're Imperial Knights. Of course they can't repair them. And look, like, look, there were a lot of good arguments made both ways really um i was just saying you know it's minor it's one to two wounds you know they, they can repair stuff like the bane blade or whatever and that's you know it's got a pretty complicated scc template um but they can actually do that so they can re repair you know one or a couple wounds a turn for the night uh, and i'm assuming again because they have a keyword kestor imperialis is assuming to that assuming that they're repairing minor wounds is how that's focused on um in the next page over uh, it goes right into uh data profiles for units and of course first up we've got Belisarius Call um, he's right in there with his got his canticles of the uh, Omnissiah Arc Magos I mean you guys probably have seen a lot of the stuff about Belisarius already um, 
tech priest dominus, and this is where that keyword is coming in here, um, where it says master of the machines. So at the end of your movement phase, the model can repair a single friendly four, no, this is interesting, okay? It says, uh, master of the machines, at the end of your movement phase, this model, the tech priest dominus, can repair a single friendly forge world or Castor Mechanicus model within three inches, but not himself. Um, if the model being repaired is a Forge World model, it regains D3 lost wounds. If it is a Castor Mechanicus model, it regains one lost wound. A model may not be the target of the Master of Machines ability more than once per turn. So, can't do that multiple times a turn, you can only do that one time a turn. But thank you, Games Workshop. Um, I think that's a super cool thing to add in. And yeah, so. Um, hey, what's up, Zach? You suck too. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's look at the Tech Priest Engineer. Um, the Tech Priest Engineer. So, Canticles of the Omnissiah. Uh, it's got that, of course, uh, Bionics. The model's got a 6-up invulnerable save. Um, he also's got Master of the Machines. Um, and during, again, movement phase, Forge World. Uh, of the, actually, this is expanded. So, he can repair a single Forge World vehicle. Um... Interesting. So not Forge World model. Uh, this is, for the Tech Priest Dominus, it is a single Forge World or Kester Mechanicus model. For the Tech Priest Engineer, it is Forge World Vehicle, Astra Militarum Vehicle, or Castor, Me oh, or Castor Mechanicus model. Again, um, keyword for the knight if they have a Castor Mechanicus, within three inches. So, yeah, um, I'm super satisfied with that. I think this is super awesome, and I'm very excited. I'm glad that they did that. Uh, let's keep kind of flipping through here. Um, ooh, the Cybernetica Data Smith. Yeah, here we go. Got Master of the Machines, got Refractor Fields, you got a 5 of Invalm. Um, you can equip them with a Gamma Pistol or the Power Fist. Uh, the Power Fist, the standard Power Fist. Um, gamma Pistol. I'm not actually familiar with that. I don't really play Admech as an army, so I apologize if I'm missing anything. Um, but strength 6, AP neg 3, and 2 damage. You can reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon when you attack a vehicle. So that's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. We have uh, da, 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 more profiles. Oh, hey, the Honor Gradoon Crawl. Let's take a look at that one. Um, that's another one I wanted to take a look at. So the Honor Gradoon Crawler profile sheet, um, it's got <clears throat> at its highest amount of... Uh, Wounds, we have a movement of 8 inches, ballistic skill of 3 ups, uh, and 3 attacks. If it gets down to 3 to 5 wounds left, it has a 6 inch movement, uh, hits on 4 ups, and it has D3 attacks. Uh, 1 to 2 wounds left, it has 4 inches, a 5 up invuln, and it has 1 attack. Um, you can give it a Cognus Heavy Stubber, range 36 inches, heavy 3, strength 4. Um, you may fire the weapon even if the firing model advanced, but you must subtract two from hit rolls when you do that. Um, it's got an eradication beamer. That sounds like fun. Uh, it's heavy D6, uh, strength 8. The AP negative 2, and that is D3 damage. Uh, when you attack a unit within 12 inches of that, change the weapon's type to heavy D3, it says, but resolve the shots with an AP of neg 4 and a damage of D6. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm really digging this thing. I think these things are going to be fun to play with. Uh, it's got a Daedalus Missile Launcher, the Gatling Rocket Launcher, and a Twin Icarus Auto Cannon. Oh, a Neutron Laser. What does that do? 48 inch range, heavy D3, strength 10, AP Neg 4, D6 damage. That's wicked. Uh, treat damage rolls of a 1 or a 2 made by this weapon as a 3 instead. Huh. That is kind of crazy. Uh, twin Heavy Phosphor Blaster is 36 inch range, heavy 6, strength 6, neg 2, AP, and 1 damage. But, units attacked by the weapon do not gain a bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. So, yeah, you don't just cover, I guess. Again, it's, I, li I like this thing. I think this thing is going to be pretty, pretty BA. Uh, it's got a 5 up in bone. Let's see, if uh, you can re-roll invulnerable saves... Uh, throws for one of any Onager Dune Crawler if it was in, within six inches of at least one other friendly Forge World Onager Dune Crawler. Interesting. The keywords are Imperium, Adeptus Mechanicus, Skitari, and Forge World. 
Um, then, of course, we go into the night profiles. The night profiles, to my knowledge, haven't changed other than the fact that they just basically have uh, added the keyword Kester Mechanicus for the household. So um, we don't have to spend too much time talking about anything like that. Uh, that's pretty standard stuff. Um, then we go on to the armory of the Admech. And we have some of uh, the weapon profiles here. Huh. That's actually kind of neat. I got an armored picture of uh, a bunch of Tyranids swarming the Admech units. It's pretty cool. Again, I hope this is focusing so you guys uh, can see that. I, I like the artwork. I like having that stuff included. Um, all right. Ooh, Congregations of War. Let's take a look at this, shall we? Soldiers of the Machine God. If your army is battle forged, all troops in the Adeptus Mechanicus detachments gain this ability. Such a unit that is within range of an objective marker, as specified in the mission, controls the objective marker, even if there are more enemy models within range of... Uh, of it. If an enemy unit is within range of the same objective marker has a similar ability, then the objective marker is controlled by the player who's got the most models in range of it as normal. Forge World Dogma. If your army is Battle Force, units with the appropriate keyword will receive the corresponding Forge World Dogma detailed opposite, so long as every other unit in their detachment is from the same Forge World. If you have chosen a Forge World that does not feature on this list, you can choose the Dogma that best suits their fighting style and battlefield strategy of the warriors that, excuse me, hail from it. Mars. What is the Mars Forge World Dogma? Each time you randomly determine the Canticle of the Omnissiah, on page 73, um, each time that's being canted, roll two dice instead of one. All units with the Dogma receive the benefit of both results. What? Uh, instead of just the result of the first dice. If a duplicate is rolled, no additional canticle is canted this turn. Graya, refusal to yield. Roll a d6 each time a model with the dogma is slain or flees. On a 6, that model refuses to yield. Uh, either the wound that slew it is ignored, or the model does not flee. However, forge-rolled units with this dogma cannot fall back unless there is a friendly forge-rolled character on the battlefield. So it has to be a friendly forge-rolled character on the battlefield. Um, in order for that to be effective or apply, rather. Um, Metallica is the relentless march. Um, if a unit with this dogma advances, it can ignore the penalty for firing assault weapons. I think we, um, I think I looked at that earlier, actually, when I did the spoiler of the community stuff. Um, but it can treat, treats all rapid-fire weapons that is armed with as assault weapons until the end of the turn. I think that's good. I just, I feel like... Mars is a little bit better, though, um, and having Belisarius calls abilities, so I don't know what you guys think about that, but um, I think that, that Mars needs to be uh, in your Admech army of choice to be making them, them good. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, if, I, if, I, if I'm wrong, feel free to tell me I'm just wrong, and what you guys are going to do or how you're going to play the Admech army. Like I said, I don't play Admech as an army. I'd like to build them. That's probably the last army that I want to collect would be Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, oh, let's take a look at the stratagems. So, um, and of course, the one that I'm most interested in is the one, again, that applies to, uh, to the Knights, to my Knights army, uh, which has to do with the fact that they can move and they can do all their stuff at basically as if they were full health. Um, and... What is of particular interest to me with that is that if you're using the Knight Lancer, uh, which moves 14 inches as its movement, um, of course, again, if you're not advancing, but when you advance with it, you can roll 2d6, which is super good too. Uh, but it, let's say they blast it to hell. Uh, it's down really low, but they haven't killed it. Uh, well, there's a stratagem in here that allows you to basically have it act as though it is at full health. Um, I find that to be extremely good. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, pretty much, I mean, with the Knight Lancer, you, uh, it's a Forge World Knight, you get to re-roll uh, your to hit rolls with that Lance, Shock Lance. So um, it's almost guaranteeing you're gonna do like 18 to 24 wounds. Um, I mean, it just deals It just deals out wounds. It kills things off the board. So that'll be real interesting to see what can be done with it, I think. Um, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go through uh, these stratagems. I don't know. Again, I, I tried to look at all the community stuff. I don't know if I spoiled everyone, but I'll just go ahead and read through them. 
Um, first up, for a two command point, we have Gloria Mechanicus. Use this stratagem at any time to immediately change which canticle of the Omnissai is being canted. You can either choose a canticle that you have not already chosen this battle or randomly select one in the usual way. Next up, we have Divine Chorus, which the, use the stratagem once per battle before determining which canticle of the Omnissiah will be in effect. Choose a canticle of the Omnissiah that has already been chosen earlier in the battle to take effect again. For three command points, we've got the Zealous Congregation. Uh, use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase. So select an Electro Priest unit from your army, and that unit can immediately fight a second time. Pretty awesome. Elimination Volley. And for two command points, uh, use this stratagem in your shooting phase if a keyword Forge World Catafron Destroyer unit from your army is within six inches of a Forge World keyword Castellan Robot unit from your army. You can add one to the hit rolls for both units in that phase for two command points. Um, for one command point, we have the Data Spike, which uh, use the stratagem immediately after fighting an Adeptus Mechanicus with an Adeptus Mechanicus character. Resolve one additional attack against an enemy vehicle within one inch of the character. If the attack hits, the enemy vehicle suffers D3 mortal wounds. That's pretty awesome. For one command point, that's a pretty cool stratagem. Um, let's see here. I want to find... Yeah, the, I, wait, is that the one I'm thinking of? Okay, so Machine Spirit Resurgent. For one command point, use this stratagem at the start of any turn. At the start of any turn, so even if it's not your turn. Uh, pick an Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Um, anyway, it says at the start of any turn. Pick an Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle or Kestor Mechanicus unit from your army. Until the end of this turn, use the top row of the model's damage table, regardless of how many wounds it has left. This ends immediately if the model is reduced to zero wounds. Interesting. So, because it says that you can use the Machine Spirit Resurgent at the beginning of any turn, what I'm now wondering is that, let's say, uh, the model, or the wound count is super low, and you can pop off on your opponent's turn for one command point, the Machine Spirit Resurgent, and use their top row of the model's damage table, regardless of how many wounds, and basically make it survive another round of shooting attacks. That's pretty crazy. Um, man, that is really, really good. Um, we'll see, Rage of the Machines. Uh, you can use this stratagem before an Adeptus Mechanicus Vehicle from your army attacks in the shooting phase, and until the end of turn, that vehicle can ignore all penalties for moving and firing a heavy weapon, for advancing and firing an assault weapon, and for advancing and firing a cogniz weapon. For the purposes of this stratagem, a cogniz weapon is any weapon profile whose name includes the word cogniz. An example would be a twin cogniz autocannon or a twin cogniz las cannon. That seems pretty awesome, also. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really digging. These stratagems are, are super cool. Um, Fresh Converts is another neat looking one. And it says, this is interesting because it says between one to three command points here. Um, use this stratagem at the end of your movement phase to pick one of your units of Agrin and the Agrippina Servitors. Agrippina Catafron Destroyers or Agrippina Catafron Breachers as follows. If you spend one command point, you can choose a unit with a power rating of five or less. If you spend two command points, you can choose a unit with a power rating of ten or less. And if you spend three command points, you can choose a unit of power rating twenty or less. You cannot pick a unit with a power rating of more than twenty. What units have a power rating of more than twenty? What am I missing? Um, if anyone wants to tell me what unit has more than... I can't at this moment think, think of one, but... Um, Remove the chosen unit from the battlefield, and you can then set it up again as you would a unit arriving as reinforcements. Set up the unit in your deployment zone within 6 inches of the edge of the battlefield and more than 9 inches from enemy models as it at its full starting... St what the 
hell? That's insane. That's absolutely crazy. Huh. Interesting. But it is only applying to the Agrinipa Agrinipa servitors, Catafron destroyers, or breachers. Um, we'll have to take a look at their profile and take a look at what they bring to the table. Um, all right, here we go. Knight of the Cog. So use this stratagem at the start of any battle round. Before determining which canticle of the Om Omnicide will be in effect, select a Castor Mechanicus unit from your army within 12 inches of a friendly Adeptus Mechanicus character. That unit, unit gains Canticles of the Omnicide ability until the start of the next battle round. So that's uh, super cool. Um, it goes on next, uh, talking about the Warlord traits. So I'll show you guys that. Briefly here, real quick. Um, the first up warlord trait we're looking at here it says the Monitor Malevolus, which once per battle you can reroll a single hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll made for your warlord. In addition, if your army is battleforged and your warlord is on the battlefield, roll a d6 each time you or your opponent use a stratagem. On a six, you gain a command point. That's pretty sweet. Uh, number two is the Magos Biologus. You can re-roll failed wound rolls when attacking enemy infantry, beast, or monster units with your Warlord. Number three is the Mecha Dominator. Your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls they make for any of their vehicles that target your Warlord. All right. Uh, number four, we've got the Necro Mechanic. Each time your Warlord you uses an ability to repair a friendly model, that model regains an additional wound. Alright, that seems pretty good. Uh, number five, whilst your Warlord is on the battlefield, you can re-roll the dice whenever you randomly select which canticle of the Omnissiah is being canted. If your Warlord has glory to the Omnissiah dogma, you can only re-roll the first dice, not both of them. Okay. Uh, number six, we're looking at Prime Hermeticum. Uh, friendly Forge World Infantry units keyword. Within six inches of your Warlord can re-roll failed hit rolls in the fight phase. All right. Um, and then, of course, it's got Forge World Warlord traits. Um, Forge World Mars. Static Psalm Code. Add three inches to the range of any aura abilities on your Warlord's data sheet. Gryia which is, um, uh, I don't know, it has in bold here, Emotionless Clarity. Uh, models in friendly Gryia units within six inches of your Warlord can shoot with assault and rapid-fire weapons, even if there are enemy units within one inches of their own, but only if they target the closest enemy unit. In such a circumstance, the model can shoot even if other friendly units are within one inch of the same enemy unit. All right. Uh, Metallica, we have Order Deficiency. If a friendly Metallica unit is within 6 inches of your Warlord when it falls back, it can still shoot during its turn, but you must subtract one from the two hit rolls in the shooting phase. Alright. Uh, Lucius is Masterwork Bionics. You add one to the invuln saving throws made for your Warlord. Reinforced Exoskeleton. Seeking... Uh, oh, sorry, that's the lore part of it. All damage suffered by your Warlord is reduced by one to a minimum of one. For uh, Stygies, Stygies, I don't know how to pronounce that, seven, or sorry, eight, <laughs> uh, we've got the Xenorite Studies. Add one to any rune rolls made for your Warlord against units that do not have Chaos, Imperium, or Unaligned Faction keywords. So, aliens. Makes sense. Ryza. Good old Ryza Rust. When setting up your warlord, choose one of their weapons. It cannot be this cannot be the Arcana Mechanicum, and increase the strength and damage characteristic of that weapon by one. All right, good stuff, man. Uh, then we go on here for the Arcana Mechanicum things, um, and then of course we have more profiles here. Oh yes, tactical objectives. Uh, 
let's see. Let's take a look at the tactical objectives. Um, score one victory point uh, with the Will of the Omnissiah. Score one victory point if you randomly determined which Cantle of the Omnissiah was going to be canted this turn. Uh, Machine Eternal is score a victory point if a vehicle from your army has suffered wounds during the course of the battle. It'll regain all the lost wounds during your turn. Number 13 is a victory for logic, and you score a victory point if during the turn the enemy psyker is destroyed or an enemy psyker fails a psychic test, or if such an enemy psychic power is denied or otherwise negated, such as through the use of Steel Mind, uh, the Iron Logic Stratagem. Hmm. Um, number 14, Rumors of a Revelation. When this tactical objective is generated, roll a d6, score one victory point if you control the corresponding objective marker and score d3 victory points if your warlord controls it instead. Number 15 is destroy and acquire. You get to score a victory point if at least one enemy vehicle is destroyed but did not explode, crash, and burn, etc. during this turn. And the last one here is a quest for knowledge, which is score d3 victory points if you control an objective marker controlled by your opponent at the start of the turn. Uh, if you control three or more objective markers that were controlled by your opponent at the start of the turn, score D3 plus three victory points instead. So again, um, a super great one. Yeah, like, I, th I think that, um, so far I really like this codex. Uh, I think that it has a lot of great stuff, and people have already said certain things um, with the previews and everything else. Um, the Frontline Gaming crew, they, they said some things about the Codex and what was coming out. Uh, like I said, uh, tactic, uh, Tabletop Tactics um, actually went through the battle report and did that, so that was a great video. If you haven't seen yet, that yet, I urge you to go check that out. Um, looking now here at the data cards, I will say that, uh, and maybe you guys, some of you guys will agree with me, that I was kind of disappointed that they did not come out with any Adeptus Mechanicus dice to go with this stuff, but... Um, I think that they've kind of been releasing stuff after the fact. So the like the dice for the Death Guard that came out a little bit after the De Death Guard stuff came out. So it's not too late for them to release a set of special Adeptus Mechanicus dice to go along with all this stuff. At least I don't think it is. Um, Games Workshop, uh, you know, you know everybody will just buy that in droves. I mean, if they'll just like Adeptus Mechanicus dice will just look cool anyway. So even if you don't play Admech, like I. Having a pair of those dice would just look really awesome. Um, I actually think the Death Guard dice look cool too. I don't know personally that, and everyone has said this multiple times, you know, are they balanced dice? I don't know. They just look cool. Like, they got pus on them, and that's a thing. I don't know how they would do Adeptus Mechanicus dice. Like, maybe they would have, like, little gears in it. Um, if they had metal, actual metal on them, then... I'm not sure that would work, because, like, again, dice and weight and all that stuff, but I don't know. Like, they probably have people that can figure this stuff out. So just make cool-looking neck dice so we can buy them and roll them, because it would be awesome. Um, I'm going to flip back here a moment. Uh, Dave, I was talking with a friend of mine earlier today, Dallas. Hi, Dallas. Um, and he, he, one of the things he was saying was is that units that sucked in 7th, uh, they've actually just buffed. So um, I know the... Uh, the robots, the castle and robots, used to get lots of hate, um, being not good. Um, we take a look at them now. They're listed at 12, 12 power. Uh, it's got an 8-inch movement, a weapon skill of 4 up, ballistic skill of 4 up, strength 6, toughness 7. Um, wounds are 6. They have 3 attacks, a leadership of 10, and their save is 3 up. Um, it includes, of course, uh, the unit is 2 robots, uh, but you can have up to 4. Um, now, if you do do up to four, your, the power rating increases to 24 for the unit. So, um, each Castellan uh, robot is armed with Castellan fist and an Insen... In, I don't know how to pronounce this. An Incendine combustor, I think, is how, that's goes, how that goes. Uh, the Heavy Phosphor Blaster is a 36-inch range, heavy three weapon, strength six, AP negative two with one damage. Units attacked... By this weapon, do not gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. So, ignoring cover. Um, the Incendine Combustor is a 12 inch range, heavy D6, strength 5, AP neg 1. Um, so, you know, it's a pretty pretty good, pretty decent flamer there. Um, the Castle and Fist are actually strength plus 4. So, it'll be hitting, uh, or there'll be strength 10, they're AP negative 3, and they do 3 damage. 
Well, with three attacks, I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Um, I, I like these things. I think they look really nice. I think they'd be fun to play with as well. Um, any model can replace their Incendine Combustor with a Heavy Phosphor Blaster, and any model can replace the Fist with two Heavy Phosphor Blasters. Um, it's got Canticles of the Amasaya, uh, Repulsor Grid. All models in the unit have a 5-up invuln against shooting attacks. Each time you roll a 6 after rerolls, but before modifiers. For the Repulsor Grid's invulnerable saving throw, the unit um, that made that attack suffers a mortal wound. Um, they've got Battle Protocols. When that is set up, it says, see the Aegis protocol, see below is in effect. You can attempt a change um, to change the unit's battle protocol at the start of each of your movement phases if there is a friendly Forge World keyword, Cybernetica Data Smith, within six inches. To do so, roll a d6. On a two up, the attempt is successful. You can select any of the three battle protocols to take effect from the start of the next battle round. Otherwise, the attempt fails and the current protocol remains in effect. So, Aegis Protocol. Um, whilst the Battle of Protocol is in effect, you get to add one to any armor uh, and invuln save throws you make for models in that unit. Uh, the Conqueror Protocol, whilst this is in effect, this unit cannot shoot, but it gets to fight twice in the fight phase instead of only once. That could be potentially very nasty. Uh, the Protector Protocol, whilst that protocol is in effect, the unit cannot move or charge, but you can double the number of shots that it makes with its ranged weapons. Example is the Heavy Phosphor Blaster's type becomes Heavy 6, and the Incendine's uh, Combustor's type becomes Heavy 2d6. Uh, and of course, if you destroy one of them, you gotta roll to see if it blows up. So, but yeah, um, I don't know. All in all, like, I think that uh, this is super cool. Um, I think that they did do a good job with this codex. I think that... Uh, you know, the Adeptus Mechanicus um, have good things to take, and, and again, you know, these things have already been said. Um, if you guys have anything to add or you have any other questions, I'll take a look here and sort of monitor the chat and see if it pops up. It might be on a little bit of, of a delay, so I'm sorry if I don't see that. Oh, what are the relics? David, um, David Israel Gately asked, what are the relics? I will go ahead and take a look and talk about the relics now. So... If you're not tuning in, if you have somebody uh, who wants to tune in, um, I'm going to go ahead and go over those relics. Let's take a look at the relics. Actually... Objectives. Uh, I don't see where they would be in content, so I'm just going to go ahead and flip. Um, but what, what I'm looking for right now, guys, I'm looking for the relics. Uh, if somebody knows exactly where to find them or if they've talked about that, um, let me know in chat. More stuff, more stuff, oops. Where are the relics? Wait, actually, do I have the relics and cards? Um, Maximum effort, baby. Yeah, no problem, David. Usually the last uh, four or fifth page. Okay, that's where I'll look. Um, see, I see tactical objectives. Uh, we got points, values, uh, arcana. Oh, yeah, arcana. I'm dumb. All right. So here we go. Here's the arcana, uh, mechanum, the relics. We're going to talk about the relics. Um, 
By the way, guys, um, thank you, by the way, for tuning in. Uh, I do appreciate that. If you guys give our page a uh, like and a follow and uh, subscribe on YouTube, we'd also really appreciate that. Um, we just came out with, uh, just partnered, uh, did some partnerships, and we got some new merchandise and stuff out if you want to check that out, too. Um, but we do appreciate uh, everybody tuning in and, of course, asking questions. So David um, asked about the relics, and we're going to talk now about the relics. Let's take a look here. Um, also, we appreciate sharing the video. So if you guys want to do that or invite more people to join in and ask more questions, um, that's also a thing that we enjoy because we like having these discussions. And it's cool that we're able to do this with an early codex copy. So let's talk relics. Um, Arcana Mechanum. Mechanicum. So many words. Uh, relics of the machine gods are items of incredible rarity. Yes, they are. Uh, we've got first up the Pater Cog Tooth. All right. Do you want me to read the lore? I'm going to read the lore. It's just a little bit fun. Like, all right, here we go. Legends told in binary code claim that his axe is the first of its kind. Built upon Mars, the Pater Cog Tooth is a venerable weapon that seems to glow with an aura of power. Although, perhaps that is simply... The rad emanations dating from the great cataclysm of Mars. Models, or model, with an Omniscient axe only. The Pater Cogtooth replaces the bearer's Omniscient axe and has the following profile. Range melee, of course. Strength plus two, AP negative two, and the damage is three damage. Pretty nasty. Next up, we have Anzion's Pseudogenitor. Appearing as a nest of nekedrites, this unsettling device can be set to dissect a nearby alien organism with startling speed and efficiency, even in the midst of battle. Blood flies, paralytic elixirs are administered, skin is peeled from muscle, and muscle parted from endoskeleton. The wearer watches with scientific interest as his device swiftly concludes its autopsy, filing away observations upon the biomechanics of the foe until the specimen collapses in a mess of laser-sliced viscera and drilled bone. Each time the bearer fights, they can make D6 additional attacks using the following profile. Anzion Pseudogenitor. Range is melee, of course. Strength 4, AP negative 1, 1 damage. Now, it does have an ability which is you can re-roll failed wound rolls for this weapon when attacking infantry units. Makes sense. It's an alien dissection tool. Next up, we have the auto... <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and read this. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced. The auto caduceus of Arkan Land. This rod's runic tip can impart blessed energy to anything metallic that the wielder strikes with sufficient vigor. These cyborgs and engines, so struck, will stitch themselves back together as if repaired by the hands of the techno-archaeologist himself. At the start of each of your turns, the bearer of this relic heals one wound. In addition, when the bearer uses an ability to repair a friendly Adeptus Mechanicus model, such as the Master of Machines, you may re-roll the dice to determine how many wounds are regained. Pretty cool. I like that one. Next, we have the uh, Uncreator Gauntlet. Ooh, that sounds fun. The Uncreator Gauntlet was originally devised to reverse engineer lost technologies. When laid upon a machine, xenotech fields are released that cause the construct's technology, or sorry, chronology, to be wound back. If the timing is accurate to the picosecond, the temporal anomaly can rejuvenate the machine of the, to the prime of its operative lifespan or go on to reduce it to a neatly arrayed pile of component parts, each ready for the tech priest's inspection. Model with a power fist only. The Uncreator Gauntlet replaces the model's power fist and has the following profile. Of course it is, again, range melee. Strength times 2 AP negative 3, damage D3. The ability is when attacking with this weapon, you must subtract one from the hit roll. Each time you successfully wound an enemy vehicle with this weapon, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any other damage that you have dealt to it. All right, so it's a better power fist. Next, we have the Phosphophoenix, the blasphemous tech priest Veriliad. 
essentially destroyed the Adeptus Mechanicus' ability to make Phosphex weaponry. Having seen the horror of the living blue-white flame, Beryllid destroyed the lone STC for the substance's creation. Efforts to recreate it have been unsuccessful ever since. Decried as heretic technus by the rest of his order, Beryllid was tr uh, tied to a stake and shot with the pistol known as Phosphenix, the finest such weapon ever produced. Perhaps fittingly, he was burnt alive by the very flame which he had tried to extinguish. Model with a Phosphor Serpenta only. Phospho Phoenix replaces the model's Phosphor Serpenta and has the following profile. Phospho Phoenix, range 18 inches, assault 3, strength 5, AP negative 3, damage 1. The ability is that units attacked by the weapon do not gain any bonus to their saving throw or being, so it ignores cover. Pretty cool. I like that one too. Uh, next up we have the Rement of the Technomata. This Baroque suit of armor contains dozens of eager life-sustaining machine spirits that buzz within its fiber bundles like stinging insects. The tech priests consider the reluctant discomfort of little import, for at simple conjuration, these spirits swarm out to inhabit the weapons of those nearby. Guns that have been graced by one of these excitable animas can pour volleys of fire into the enemy even when their wielders falter. Roll a dice each time the bearer of the Rymet of the Technomartyr loses a wound. On a six, that model does not lose a wound. In addition, each time a friendly Forge World model within six inches of the bearer fires Overwatch and you roll a six to hit, you can make one bonus attack with the same weapon against a charging unit. These attacks cannot generate further attacks. Alright, that's pretty interesting. Next, we have the Skull of Elder Nicola. This yellowed, multi-lacquered servo skull is perhaps the most ancient of its kind. It has been ghost-dated to the early days of mankind when primitive Terrans had barely evolved the ability to conjure light. Should the correct praise psalm be sung to it, the halo of electrical power that surrounds its bony circumference will explode outwards into a ring of crackling force, scrambling the unnatural workings of enemy war engines. Once per game in your shooting phase, the bearer can unleash the power bound within the skull of Elder Nicola. Should the bearer do so, roll a dice for each enemy vehicle unit within 2d6 inches of them. On a 2-up, that unit suffers a mortal wound. That's probably the coolest relic. That's my favorite relic so far. I don't know about you guys, but that, that's my favorite one so far. All right, next we have the Omniscient Mask. Legend has it that the wearer of the Omniscient Mask can read the souls of men. Each rendered as legible as the binaric calligraphy of the Illuminatoria, an object of great veneration amongst the Skitari. Those under its gaze fight all the harder, fearing they will be found wanting in the eyes of the Omnissiah's chosen. You can re-roll failed hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly Skitara units that are within six inches of the bearer of the Omniscient Mask. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Next we have the Cerebral Technomiter. Perhaps the most famous of all cogitator engines is the Cerebral Technomiter, a secondary brain that uses synaptic links to directly assist the bearer's own mental capacity. Even amidst the maelstrom of battle, the device runs complex algorithms to suggest the best course of action. Uh, Graia, it says, is, I assume this is the keyword here. Uh, yeah, got Graia Tech Priest Dominus only. If your army is battleforged and includes the bearer of the cerebral techno mitre, you start the battle with one additional command point. Well, that was kind of anticlimactic. Um, Next up, we have the Red Axe. Uh, the appropriately named Red Axe is a colossal, cog-bladed axe, edged in priceless star metal that emits a crimson glow. The supply of this unique ore is so limited that only one such weapon has ever been created. It is claimed that few foes can withstand a blow from the Red Axe, a fabled treasure from the war vaults of Mars. Uh, keyword Mars, model with an omniscient, omniscient axe only. The Red Axe replaces the Bearer's Omniscient Axe and has the following profile of uh, Strength plus 1, AP negative 5, 2 damage. That's pretty neat. Next up is the Solar Flare. 
The Solar Flare is a unique Lucius invention, combining Forge World's knowledge of solar fusion and teleportation. It is a personal teleportation device that, when triggered, causes the bearer to burst from the warp in a flash of binding white light. The highly coveted item has never been successfully replicated. Lucius model only. Once per game, at the end of your movement phases, the bearer of the solar flare can teleport instead of moving normally. When they do so, remove them from the battlefield and then replace them anywhere that is within 30 inches of their starting position and more than 9 inches from enemy models. Next up is the adamantine arm. Bionic arms are standard issue enhancements on every forge world, but it was a tech priest of Metallica that saw room for improvement. Yeah, there we go. Powered by batteries of micro-servo engines, the entire arm has been sheathed in nigh-impenetrable adamantine, making an appendage that is mightier and harder-hitting than any yet invented. Long live efficiency. Metallica model only. This weapon has the following profile. It is strength times 3, AP negative 3, 3 damage. Uh, ability is that this weapon can only be used to make one attack every time the model fights. And uh, we're almost to the end of them. Uh, the next one is the Omnissiah's Hand. The device known as the Omnissiah's Hand is a gauntlet lined with a concealed array of digital lasers believed to be of Jacaro origin. Such items might be techno-heresy to other Forge Worlds, but many a tech adept of the Stygies 8 has become obsessed in their quest to replicate its technology. Thus far, their efforts have been to no avail. The Stygies 8 models only can roll a dice at the end of each fight phase for each enemy unit within one inch of the bear of the Omnissiah's hand. On a four-up, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Uh, the weapon of <laughs> Jeex, uh, X, X C I X, I don't know. Um, anyway, Ryza is the rare forge world that believes in innovation, and their top tech priests all have their own experimental weapons under development. Such devices often never reach the battlefield, but... The upvaulted Volkite Blaster, known only as Weapon XCIX, has proved its incredible prowess in battle on numeral. Oh, I guess they're Roman numeral designations. Um, Ryza model with the Volkite Blaster. Uh, weapon uh, replaces the model's Volkite Blaster and has the following profile range 24 inches, type is heavy 3, strength 7, AP negative 1, 2 damage. The ability is, each time you make a wound roll of 6-up for the weapon, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. And lastly, the last relic that we have to go over is the Eye of Zilexum. Zilexum was a legend of Agrinipia, and none could match the acquisitional triumphs of his Marcolades. Even after his death, the Zilexum serves his forge world still. A servo skull has been made from the cranium of the fallen tech priest who was slain in battle by an agent of the Dark Mechanicum. Even in death, Xylexum's withering gaze can reveal the weakness of every foe, and it is especially effective in its judgments of those twisted by chaos. Agrinipa model only. At the start of each of your shooting phases, pick one enemy vehicle unit within 18 inches of the bearer. You can re-roll wound rolls for one friendly Agrinipa Unit that targets the unit that you picked for the rest of the phase. That's a lot to take in there. Um, if the unit is picked, or if the unit picked is a chaos vehicle, you can instead re-roll failed wound rolls for friendly Agrinipa units that target the unit. All right, that's uh, pretty awesome. Um, I'm gonna go over uh, points. Points per model here briefly. Um, we've got the Castle and Robots at 65 points per unit. Uh, the Knight Crusader at 320. Um, and we have a Knight Warden. Actually, all of the Knights, Crusader, Errant, Gallant, Paladin, Warden, um, are at 320 points. Um, the Onager Dune Crawler is 90. Tech Priest Dominus is 125. The Tech Priest Engineer is 40. Uh, heavy Flamer, 17. Heavy Arc Rifle is 8. Galvanic Rifles are, cost nothing. Um, the Cognus Flamer is 10 points. The Avenger Gatling Cannon is a whopping 95 points. Um, Storm Spiel Rocket, Rocket Pot at 45. I don't believe any of those numbers have changed. I don't have the index or anything in front of me to double check that, but I don't think that that has changed. Um, Enhanced data, data tether is 9 points. The Om, Omnispex is 7 points. So yeah, 
Um, Castle and Fist, to add those on, would be 35 points. They're quite expensive. Um, Thunderstrike Gauntlet is 35 points. Uh, Hall himself, uh, it says, including his war gear, is at 250. So, yeah, there you have it, guys. Um, again, you know, I think we're, we're down to, like, a or two views, so... Um, if anyone had any other questions, let me know. Um, take a look at this video or shoot us a message. Uh, we we're glad to be able to, to get this early, and hopefully we'll have a battle report coming out soon. If you guys have suggestions on what you want to see for a battle report um, against the Adeptus Mechanicus, uh, my buddy Dallas uh, and contributor is the guy that's got the ad mech stuff. So um, whatever you guys want to see play against the ad mech or suggestions for the battle report against the ad mech, let us know. And... Um, We'll, we'll do that. We'll get that battle report going for you. And yes, I'm taking your suggestions. They will be painted models. Don't worry. It will look nice and pretty. Um, did anyone have, before we close it out, did anyone have any other questions relating specifically with the new AdMet Codex or just in general or anything like that? There's a bit of a delay, so I'm going to go ahead and scan the chat just to see if anyone is adding anything else in. Comments, questions, concerns, anything like that. Checking, checking, checking to see if there's anything else. No, 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 I don't think so. I think we are good. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up there. Like I said, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in and watching the video, guys. Um, if you haven't already, please give our page a like and a follow. Um, you can search us with typing in the Drop Podcast on YouTube. Um, give us a follow there, subscription there as well. Uh, we are, I'd like to be coming out with an idea for, um, a Patreon as well. So look out for that. Uh, we want to keep upping the quality and the content and bringing that stuff to you guys and, uh, you know, doing the best that we can to contribute to the community. So we really appreciate everybody tuning in and, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, Wargamers.